What's up, YouTube? This is 2Raw4TV. So, in game one of this first round series between the Dallas Mavericks and the Utah Jazz, uh, Utah was able to come to Dallas and come away with a 99-93 to victory, taking home court away. And this would be a more satisfying victory for Utah if it wasn't for the fact that Dallas was without not just their best player, Luka Doncic, who probably will, won't be available for game two either, but also Tim Hardaway Jr. So this is a team that was seriously lacking firepower. But despite that, if it wasn't for certain misfires at the end of the game, Utah might have blown this. Once again, I have witnessed Utah blow a double-digit lead. At one point down the stretch, the Dallas Mavericks had a lead. This is despite being out-rebounded, I think, 53-34, to when I last looked at it. And this is despite the fact that Dallas shot 38% from the floor and 28% from three. So Webb kept them in the game, free throws, and turnovers. Utah committed 14 turnovers. And it was it's the same old song with this team, man. Um, <clears throat> Donovan Mitchell early on was struggling. He, he, he pretty much he kind of got into a rhythm later on. Finished with uh, 32.6 rebounds, 6 assists. Took a lot of shots. Those are the types of games that the Utah Jazz usually lose. When Donovan Mitchell gets points, but he, he yaks up a lot of shots to get them, and he doesn't uh, get his teammates involved the way he should. Now, I mean, he did have 6 assists. But Donovan Mitchell, I think, will be a better player if he averaged more along the lines of seven assists a night. Let me see how many assists Donovan Mitchell averages. About five. Yeah, that's that's, that's pretty much what I was thinking. If he was to average more around seven. And get get his teammates involved. <coughs> Excuse me. I think this team will be a lot better. Utah is just too fucking predictable. I've been saying this ever since the bubble, ever since I've been paying attention to this team. They're too goddamn predictable. It's the same fucking thing. The only problem that Dallas had, and kudos to Jason Kick, I think he did a hell of a job keeping his team into the game as much as they did. The only guy they really had that could score was Brunson. It was a monumental task trying to get this team over the hump, but they lacked firepower. So the fact that they were able to keep, I'm telling you, man, Utah is destined to be a second-round exit yet again. Um. I don't know if Dallas, if they lose game two, can overcome an 0-2 deficit heading into Utah. I mean, anything's possible. And plus, Luka, let's say he comes back in game three. He may not be himself. I don't know. But I feel like if Luka was healthy, this team would have beaten the Utah Jazz, okay? Um, however, at the same time, if Dallas does lose this series, and if they get swept, I know it's unfair, and it is unfair, I guess you can't, couldn't blame it on Luka, but if they get swept, that's a bad look on Luka's resume, that he keeps losing the first round. Now, I know people are like, you can't blame him 
if if his team can't get it done without him, no. But at some point, if he comes back for games three and games four, you got to get some type of moral victory. You can't let these motherfuckers sweep you. Not Utah. No. I know Charles Barkley said something uh, one time. He said, unless, uh, he said every, he, he, the proudest thing that he ever achieved in his career is that he had never been sweeped in a playoff series. And um, I'm not saying that that's possible every time. Sometimes the team could just be so much better than you, but Utah is a very beatable team. You know, you, they're very predictable. Their coach, to me, is very overrated. Um, Dallas, uh, Jason Kidd is a great basketball mind. I think Dallas is more than capable of beating Utah at Utah. So, I mean, if they lose this series, so be it. But if they get swept, even with Luka not playing the first two games, I still see that as an indictment on Luka. I'm sorry. I still see it as an indictment on Luka and the Dallas Mavericks. Like I said, I'm not giving out no excuses no more for these fucking players. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially if you get all this praise and, you know, you, you know all this praise and adulation throughout the regular season, but it's the same old spiel during the, during the playoffs. So that's all I got to say. Tell me what you guys think.